Bon dia. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different in this vlog. I'm going to talk to you about Manly Wade Wellman. He was an author and he, although being an American, happened to have been born here in Angola. Uh, not here in Lubongu, I should certainly clarify, because he was born in Kamandongu. He was the son of Frederick Crichton Wellman, who at the time was in Kamandongu serving as a missionary doctor. Frederick wrote an autobiography of his uh, unusual life called Life is Too Short. And although at the time he presented himself as a genuine missionary, in the book he says that he really only came out here for the adventure. In fact, soon after he brought the family back to the United States, he left his wife and children uh, and then wound up in an affair with one of his students, which caused a major scandal at the School of Tropical Medicine where he was teaching. And according to a history of tropical medicine published recently that I had read, he set back the cause of tropical medicine by the scandal that he created. They summed him up as the Casanova of tropical medicine. So he had four children with his first wife. Paul Wellman being the eldest. Paul Wellman became an author, but he didn't write about Africa despite having spent his childhood here. He wrote primarily Western stories, and one of them became a John Wayne film, The Comancheros. And then there was Alice Wellman. She became an author very late in life, in the 1970s. She wrote primarily children's books, and she wrote a lot about Angola in what appeared to me to be very rose-tinted memories of her childhood and of her father. There was also Frederick's namesake, Frederick Wellman, who was not an author, but nor a doctor for that matter, but instead became a plant pathologist, and there's a, a ward named after him in botany. But Manly Wade Wellman is the one I want to talk about. He was an author, like Paul and Alice, but he wrote popular fiction and a lot of genre fiction. He's probably best remembered to people today because he wrote for Weird Tales, the pulp magazine of horror and fantasy. And as well, he wrote for that disreputable medium called comic books. Spy Smasher number one, that's an example of a comic book he wrote. Uh, and I should note, I did not bring a copy of Spy Smasher one all the way to Angola. Uh, sorry, this is actually a copy of Flashback that reprints Spy Smasher number one. It, it's not a, a genuine article. But still, I have brought a little piece of Manly Wade Wellman back to Angola, the place where he was born. So it was interesting to me when I discovered there was a famous American comic book writer who was born here in Angola. I, I really didn't expect that. However, he wasn't too proud of the fact that he had been in comics. Later in life, when he was asked about his work in comic books in the 1940s, he was very dismissive to the person interviewing him. He did not sign his name to most of the comics that he wrote, even though he wrote for some comics that were considered to be very good, like The Spirit. Most of his works do not have his name on them, like I don't believe his name is here inside Spy Smasher number one. So to this day we're still just kind of guessing at what it, he wrote exactly, because he didn't think too highly of it, he didn't really want to talk about it his comic book career, which is a shame because he was a golden age comic book writer. He wrote for some of the most popular characters of the 1940s. He wrote for Captain Marvel. He wrote for Captain America. It, well, and, and Spy Smasher. It really is a shame that he didn't think too highly of it. So I've been taking a look at the life of 
all of the members of the Wellman family, but Manly Wade Wellman in particular, because unlike his older brother Paul, he had very fond memories of Angola. Pretty much every time somebody interviewed him, he would talk up the fact that, well, I was born in a place called Kamandongu in Angola. He'd talk about how, as a child, he learned to speak Mbundu. And as well, unlike Paul, he wrote about Angola in his stories. Several of his stories, even when they don't identify Angola, if you've been here, you know he's writing about Angola. To the untrained observer, it might seem that he's writing about generic Africa, but then there will be a reference to Mbundu and you know, oh, he's, he's writing about Angola because that's the Africa that he knew. Or he'll drop a reference to somewhere like Benguela, and if you don't know Angola, that will just slip right past you. If you know Angola, you're aware, oh yes, Benguela, actual place that he knew well because his father worked on the Benguela railway for a time. So it's really fascinating to put this together, to discover a little bit of missionary history and comic book history intertwined here in Angola in a way that you wouldn't expect. So I hope that you found this interesting. I hope to do some actual writing about Wellman. I'd like to publish something about his work and to talk about the influence that Angola had on him as an author. So I hope that's something that you'll see from me in the future. Obrigado. Ciao for now.